Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Don B and Rick O. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, Tesla is set to release its production and delivery figures for quarter one. Should be on Sunday, April 2nd, sometime around 9 a.m. Pacific time, according to Troy. If you look at his chart for the last 12 quarters, this data has been released on the second, so it's a pretty safe bet. Typically for European deliveries, it's wise to not get too jazzed up over one month or one country, but there's more in this article. Here are some figures for year to date delivery. So almost a full quarter in Norway, Tesla delivered 7,565. Second place is VW with 3,072. So Tesla has doubled up the second place brand in terms of deliveries this year. Again, year to date, Tesla has 34% of the market share in Norway up from 12% in 2022. From Roland in Norway, Tesla has already sold as many cars this year as they did through the month of August last year, and we still have a few days left. What may be an even more important chart though, also from Roland, is you can see that we are now getting more deliveries from Germany, which are these pink bars, as of really quarter four last year and Q1 this year. This is part of why Giga Berlin ramping up is so important because now that it's reached volume production and will continue to expand, it's going to reduce the EU's reliance on deliveries from China, which helps to shrink logistical challenges and will also reduce cost. Here's one more chart for good measure from JPR showing Tesla's dominance thus far throughout the entirety of Q1 in Norway. And yes, Tesla has officially broken its own quarterly record in Q1. The previous was actually Q4 of last year. Yet another case where Tesla exceeds Q4, an impressive feat. Speaking of deliveries, Tesla is asking some customers to actually come to this little port in Sweden to pick up their vehicle fresh off the boat. Tesla telling some customers their vehicle is on a ship set to arrive at this port on March 31st, asking them to come take delivery directly from the port. In the event of no response, we may pause your order until April to May to further encourage these people to make the trip. Ultimately, some people will love this type of thing, ingenuity, creativity, Tesla thinking outside the box, and then other people won't like it as much, but it is what it is. We got an update from Weddell & Sons Roofing just saying that they've still been working on Tesla solar and solar roof installations, working around the snow in these select states. Yes, this is one of the Tesla certified installers. I bring this up because over the past year, Tesla has seemingly been trying to find the balance versus doing its own in-house installations for solar and solar roof versus contracting some of this out to third parties. The feeling and reporting would lead us to believe that Tesla has been focusing on more contract work, meaning not doing as much installation in-house with people that Tesla actually hires. However, as Electrek pointed out, there are some new Tesla job postings for licensed electricians in California job description, lead the installations of residential photovoltaic solar systems, solar roofs, battery storage, and EV wall connectors. So I bring this up as a counter to what I think some of us have been thinking that Tesla is not just going to contract out everything and use third parties, they are still working to do at least some of these installations in-house themselves. I have a lot of wishes for Tesla, one of which is definitely that they would give us more granularity on the Tesla energy division. Hopefully as it grows and scales, they'll start to break out a little bit more. Mega pack, power wall, solar roof. Tesla doing that would open up the door for us to backdoor some math and do some numbers to figure out growth rates for specific products and profitability for certain divisions under the Tesla energy umbrella. Fingers crossed. From DTC, Tesla will be expanding into Canada with what will be one of the biggest locations in Canada, a 60,000 square foot building in Dartmouth, just outside Halifax, Nova Scotia. According to a permit, they're looking at around $1.3 million in renovations, and ultimately this will serve as a showroom, a service area, and office space for employees. Personally, I love seeing Tesla quietly expand in many different ways while everywhere else you look, most people are shrinking or cutting back. This matters. This week, some officials from Mexico were touring the area where Giga Mexico is set to be built. This was along with some Tesla team members, and if you remember, we're really just waiting for some final permits for them to actually begin construction, 
and the reporting about a month ago was that the breaking ground could be as soon as the end of this month. However, we're effectively there now, so now let's hope for April. As I mentioned on Twitter, I think it's about time the Tesla community gets a drone pilot lined up for Giga Mexico because we cannot let this start without us having some eyes on the site. Fun fact, had things played out differently, this specific site could have turned into a Six Flags amusement park. On LinkedIn, Idra posted GigaPress safety doors securely packed in their case and ready for the transatlantic crossing. We've known it's been coming, but Tesla Asia making it official, the first deliveries of the refreshed Model S and X Plaid have taken place in China. I'll say it again, I think this will raise the bar or Tesla's halo effect in the region with these new vehicles, further building Tesla's brand as a luxury automaker. Speaking of China, after releasing earnings, BYD was talking to the press and they said they do not have any current plans to enter the United States car market. They said their home market of China has already entered a full expansion phase for NEVs, so it sounds like they're gonna focus on that market as well as some areas in the EU for now. Bloomberg is in the midst of conducting a new updated survey only for Tesla owners. So if you'd like to provide some feedback, I will include this link below. There's two different links. One if you took the survey in the past and this one if it's your first time. Sounds like you'll just need your VIN and about seven to 10 minutes. Dirty Tesla said version 11.3.3 downtown drive was one of the most impressive I've seen. The car handled everything not only safely but naturally, awesome improvements in downtown driving for me. Personally, I've always enjoyed his honesty, so I thought some of you would enjoy this feedback. I will link his full video below. And just so all of you guys know, if you ever have video clips you want to email to me to share, I would be happy to. If you see some edge cases or good or bad experiences with FSD beta, just know I would love that and the option is open. Replying to Tesla Diva, Elon said the Tesla car temperature is automatically kept within a safe range, even when the car appears to be off in order to protect infants and pets. That said, it would be more convenient to keep the car on for entertainment and comfort if the camera detects occupants. We will make that change. Now, who knows what the timeline will be for Tesla to deliver this new feature. I'm always impressed though that Tesla has the ability to do things like this and Elon takes the time to respond and implement these changes. Go ahead and pause the screen for a second if you want to read this quote about pessimism from Peter Thiel. I wanted to show you just a fun fact. Elon said, I thought both SpaceX and Tesla each had less than a 10% chance of success. At least for Tesla, as I've been saying, if their success chances were that low, according to Elon, at a time when interest rates were lower, there was much less EV competition. Access to capital was a lot easier. Think of how hard it's really going to be for some of these new companies in this day and age to actually survive, let alone thrive. There are no guarantees for companies like Rivian, Lucid, and even most of the OEMs as we know. Anyone near Montreal, Quebec, or anybody willing to relocate, there's a new job posting to help Tesla with its ADAS testing, identify improvements and regressions across software iterations. This will include domestic and international destinations. Tesla did say, however, you will need a bit more than just a love for Tesla and testing FSD. This Reddit user pointed out that in their latest software 2023.6.8, now you can find the user manual actually directly through the UI. I know some cars, some versions have already had this, but in case you didn't know, this is now a feature. Something for some of you to check on if this will impact you, but Tesla North is saying that Tesla automatically resets the warning sensitivity to the default medium setting at the start of each drive when it comes to the forward collision warning. And here's a screenshot of the actual note. So if you like having it on a setting other than medium, just know you may have to do this manually before each drive. Here are the steps to adjust that setting if you need to. Over the past few months, we've heard a few reports of the Tesla Semi breaking down. Now we get a little bit more color. Some of the breakdowns have been caused by a glitch with the software. So far, it sounds like there have been eight instances of Tesla Semis breaking down. It's unclear how many of these instances have been caused by this software glitch, but according to sources, the glitch is causing the dash screens and lights on them to flicker and sometimes shut off. 
So far, the drivers have just been pulling over and then they've been towed from there to a secret location in Lathrop to be worked on. Looks like at least four of the units have been towed to this location. Naturally, I do wonder if any of these drivers have been told they can reset the system by pressing and holding both of the wheel buttons on the steering wheel, but maybe since it's a test fleet, Tesla wants to know everything that goes wrong and they wanna actually handle it directly so they can figure it out and work it out. In my eyes, things like this are part of why the Tesla Semi ramp will be slower than some have been expecting. They just need to work through a lot of new things with this vehicle and it's normal and should be expected. With that said, some form of mobile diagnostics would of course be much easier and more convenient than having to tow the vehicle each time something like this happens. So we'll see how this shakes out. We got a bit more detail on the upcoming Kia EV9. There will be a dual motor all wheel drive setup as well as a rear wheel drive option. The latter is likely to have the longest range around 280 miles. Vehicle is set to go on sale in North America in the second half of this year, but Kia has not yet released any pricing. This will be built on the eGMP platform, meaning it will have an 800 volt architecture. It sounds like there will be two different battery pack options, a smaller 77.6 kilowatt hour version, as well as a 99.8 kilowatt hour pack, but the specific ranges for each have not been released. But again, word on the street is the highest range will be around 280 miles when it comes to the EPA's methodology. Kia did say it's working on a LiDAR based system called Highway Driving Pilot that should allow level three autonomous driving in certain situations. You can find me on Twitter at Dylan Loomis 22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.